Hi, I'm Troy Topnik, technical writer at Active State Software, and this screencast is a quick introduction to Komodo IDE. Komodo is an extensible cross-platform IDE built on the Mozilla framework. It supports syntax highlighting and common editing functions for most programming languages, and has much deeper support for languages such as Ruby, PHP, Python, Perl, and Tickle, as well as languages used in web development such as HTML, XML, JavaScript, and CSS. The IDE has a built-in debugger, graphical debugger, that allows you to set breakpoints and find problems in your code by examining variables, and basically watching your code in action. It has a code browser, which displays a tree view of the structure of your code, showing things like variables and classes. It has a regular expression toolkit, which helps you write regular expressions, and uh, shows you the results of the matches and allows you to test them before you put them in your code. It has an HTTP inspector, which is useful in looking at the HTTP traffic of your applications, especially useful in debugging AJAX code. And it has a DOM viewer for inspecting the DOM structure of your XML and HTML documents. By default, when you open up Komodo, you'll see this start page. It's a collection of links to recently used projects and files, as well as some other resources like tutorials and a, a sample project. This sample project contains files in the languages that I mentioned earlier. I'll talk more about projects later. The editor pane is the main work area in Komodo. It's a tabbed interface with each file having its own tab and you can move those tabs around to rearrange them. Just like in Firefox, you can also split your view and move tabs between the two tab groups. This uh, sample HTML file, uh, like most web pages, has uh, more than just HTML in it. It has some embedded JavaScript. It has some embedded CSS. Now Komodo knows which is which and provides code intelligence appropriately. In the JavaScript section, we get autocomplete in JavaScript. We get call tips. In the CSS sections, likewise, we get CSS autocompletion. And Komodo indents uh, intelligently, depending on what kind of a block you're in. You uh, can also fold these blocks to get a more compact view of your code. Now the appearance of the editor is customizable. In Komodo's preferences, you can change the appearance of all the fonts and uh, there are some different schemes that you can choose from. And there's also ways to customize the syntax highlighting on a language by language basis. Toolbars in Komodo are configurable. In the View menu, you can show the ones that are useful to you and hide the ones that you don't use very much. One toolbar that I find particularly useful is the Open Find. You can open a file by typing the path in the Open field, which has tab completion. And you can use the Find field to search for strings either in files or in directories. In this case, the dot signifies the current directory. The results of the search appear in the Find Results tab. Once you find what you're looking for, double-clicking on that file brings it up in the editor view at the appropriate line.
Most Komodo commands have keyboard shortcuts, and all commands can be mapped to custom shortcuts. There's a default key binding scheme, and ones for emulating Emacs and VI. You can create your own scheme based on any of these, adding or modifying the key bindings. Komodo will let you know if there's a conflict. Enabling VI emulation gives you modal editing behavior similar to VI or Vim. There's even a command mode that opens a field at the bottom for entering commands. Several VI commands are supported. You can add new commands by putting macros and run commands in the VI commands folder in your toolbox. The toolbox is a global container for commands, macros, snippets, links, and shortcuts. These components are described in detail in the documentation, but it's worth mentioning a few of them. Live folders are shortcuts to directories on your file system, and they can be browsed in a tree view. You can open files. Commands are essentially saved shell commands and you can treat these like little scripts that have access to variables called interpolation shortcuts. These are Komodo variables which uh, fill in things like the base name of the file, current line number, the selection, your configured browser. There's also something called snippets. Snippets are little chunks of text that you can insert in your code and they can use interpolation shortcuts as well. There's a number of examples of these in the HTML directory, and these can be linked to uh, key bindings for quick access. Macros can be very simple or very, very powerful, depending on how deep you want to dig. For a simple macro, you can just record your actions in Komodo like you might in a word processor. For more complex macros, you can write them in Python or JavaScript using Komodo's macro API uh, and the Komodo JavaScript API. If you open them in a tab, you get auto-completion and call tips. Komodo projects are essentially project-specific toolboxes. You can put the same things into projects as you can in your toolbox. Projects have their own subset of properties. These are preferences which override the global Komodo preferences. And this is uh, useful if you need, a, say, a specific debugger configuration or a library include path for the batch of files that you're working on. If you find yourself defining the same types of projects over and over, you may want to create a project template. There's a few of these in Komodo, and the Ruby on Rails project template really shows off just how much you can do with the project template. That's it for now. There's a lot more in Komodo than I can fit in a short screencast, but I hope that's enough to get you interested. Look for more screencasts from the Komodo team looking at individual features in depth. Thanks for watching and have fun exploring Komodo.